Welcome back to Sailing Miss Lone Star. What is it like pulling up to port? What are the things that we look for when we go to drop anchor in a place? Find adventure, right? But aside from adventure, there are some creature comforts that are not always on our boats. When we drop the anchor and we find marinas, we're always looking for a place where we can find food, water, showers, and laundry. And these are kind of our top things. The other thing is just people that are nice. Sarasota is one of those places where they're just really nice to sailors and boaters alike. And they ticked off all of the boxes for laundry, nice showers, just a beautiful facility, restaurants, there's a tiki bar, there's gorgeous beaches. This was a great example of an anchorage of a mooring field, of a marina, of an area that I would highly recommend because there is things to see and there is a place for you to just kind of recharge. I was even able to take a few yoga classes in town and everything's walkable. So why don't you guys take a walk with me and let's go check out Sarasota, Marina Jacks and what the area has to offer. Where in Florida is the best place to stay on your boat? I vote Sarasota, and here's why. Marina Jacks. There was a wonderful laundry facility, very clean restrooms and showers, and the staff was very helpful. I really enjoyed walking downtown. There are so many great cafes to choose from. The locals are kind and the streets are lined with art galleries. I got my fill 
of lattes and macaroons. Music plays in the streets, and the overall vibe of downtown Sarasota is amazing. Anything you could really want or think of is just in walking distance in Sarasota. The closest grocery store is Whole Foods, which was a real treat. If I had four arms, I would have carried twice as many groceries. It is really beautiful. It's about sunset right now, and Cyril's going to fly the drone. We spent earlier today walking around downtown, and it was really nice. We like West Palm Beach a lot, but Sarasota definitely takes the cake. The facilities here are really cool. There's laundry, there's a lounge, there's a conference room, and the bathrooms are really nice. I didn't take you into the bathrooms because I didn't want to look like a creeper, but just trust me, they're really, really nice. I went a little crazy on organic produce. What can I say? It's my guilty pleasure. So we're gonna take off tomorrow and start heading south so we can get around to the other side. Although I will say that we spent about a day deciding if we're gonna stay here and do all of our repairs here in Sarasota because it's just so nice. So yeah, I recommend it. Check out Marina Jacks. The most interesting thing about Sarasota as a sailor is the fact that it hasn't been hit by a hurricane in recent history. Some attribute this to Native American folklore, but there's some science behind the myth. Because of Sarasota's location on the Hurricane Highway, most storms that would likely strike are weakened by having to pass through Cuba. Thanks, Cuba. For any of you that have ever been to Florida, you know the sunsets are absolutely amazing. I mean, I really can't compare them to any other place, and I've been to a few. Good morning. The sun has just come up, the generator's running, and we are leaving Sarasota. I know, I know. It was lots of fun. We stayed for a lot longer than I thought we were going to, but it was some really needed rest and recovery. So I am not sorry. We didn't do much work on the boat. We just kind of enjoyed ourselves, which I tend to not do too much. I'm just like, go, go, go. I want to fix. I want to take on more projects. But uh, I took some much needed time for myself and I'm feeling good. So now we're ready to go and we're headed off to Cabbage Key. We have nine bridges, so that's gonna be interesting. I always give myself the option to duck out halfway just in case, you know, tired. I don't really like navigating new anchorages and inlets at the, in the dark, especially on the west side of Florida because it's shallow. So we'll see how it goes and wish us luck. And uh -huh. I'm gonna drink this coffee and then we're gonna start getting the boat ready, woo! Lessons learned on this boat. This is kind of a nice medium jump up from Little Miss to the Formosa. And this boat has a really nice set of davits and a crane for the outboard. But I do have to say that when I have them built for the Formosa, I'm gonna have davits built that are strong enough to pull the engine up as well because, well, a few reasons. I wanna be able to drop it and assist the boat if we need to and also it's a huge pain in the ass using this crane because you have to then navigate it over to the plate and it's just awkward so it's functional but for me you know I'm not a big strong man and I just I think for a woman that doesn't have a lot of strength in upper body I think that it's not the best design so we're gonna get it done I like to be able to do things without squirrel and this is not one of those things so we're gonna we're gonna get to it. We've got the bridal bra, 
a, a hoist straps? I don't know. We've got that on the engine and uh, we're gonna alley-oop onto the side of the boat. So here's the bridle bra hoist strap apparatus. Here is the crane and here is the plate which I need to clean. This piece is a little bit in the way or a lot of bit in the way but if you move the plate over here then you can't sit in the seat which is a pretty cool spot. So yeah it's a great piece of equipment but it's a little bit difficult to use. So if you have any suggestions for me on where to move that or how to change this. I don't have a lot of experience with these dinghy cranes. Outboard cranes? <laughs> Whatever it's called. Um, let me know. Maybe it's the, the plate. There could be a thinner plate. I don't know. But it's done. Check. Tink. Bridge number two, stick key. Stick knee. Stick knee. Stinky point. Stick knee bridge. Bridge number two, here we go. She's opening. They're so nice on this side. ICW update. Bridge number three, Blackbird Bridge. The guy has to run out into the middle of it and stop traffic and then open it by hand. That's what he said in not so many words. So it's in front of us. I see a guy on a skateboard. I think it's gonna be okay. What did you think of that bridge? It was super cool. It reminded me of Huckleberry Finn. Have you read Huckleberry Finn? Did no. Did in South Africa? What? No Mark Twain for you? That explains a lot. ICW update? Uh, bridge number 76. Actually, I think it's four. I think it's four. It's Bascule Bridge. I think that's how you say it. And it's tiny. It's a 14 foot clearance and these guys have it timed to the T when you call for an opening. I get scared and want to slow down and uh, they are just right on time. So check it out. ICW update. Hatchet Creek Bridge. Bridge number five, and we're going point nine knots, and we have nine minutes. And I can see it, and I'm getting blown into stuff, and I'm feeling nervous. Okay, that one was a little scary for me. Small heart attack, we still have a mast. Waiting for the next bridge. Let's do this. Good job, squirrel. Okay, can you hear me? We're just about to go through Circus Bridge. Bridge number seven, I think? I'm still getting over my mini heart attack on the last bridge. Yee!
W updates. We are just going to go under the Mansoda Bridge, which is a column up and they open it for you, which I like. Kind of. I still get scared. We're really pushing it to get to Cabbage Key before dark, but uh, I have hope. Somebody that loves his boat, that's all. Yeah. All opening port lights, aluminium tow rail. We have reached the last bridge of the day, albeit it's a few miles ahead, but I can see it now. And we've been running the motor all day. She's been purring like a kitten, and I am so deeply appreciative for an inboard. Whew. You just don't know what you're missing, but you know it's on the other side. Yeah, so today was good. I felt good. I didn't feel seasick at all. I mean, we're in the ICW, so it probably has a lot to do with it. But um, I had a sandwich instead of just coffee, which is like the kiss of death. If you're worried about getting seasick, you gotta eat something, not just coffee. Coffee is not breakfast and lunch, as I would like to believe. Other than that, we've done well. The critters have done well, and we are going to be there in about eight miles. So that's gonna be fantastic. We're gonna make something nice, like soup for dinner. And there's a new season of our favorite show out. Should I tell you what it is? It's Vikings. I really like it. I know, this is like funny gossip you guys probably don't care about, but it's like eight episodes. I think new episodes and then it's over. It's gonna be cool. So we're gonna eat some popcorn, eat some soup, and um, cuddle in. And then tomorrow, or maybe next time on Sailing This Lone Star, we're gonna take you to Cabbage Key. All right, well, do, do you wanna watch Vikings with me or no?